Before we begin, I want to thank Sarah Ayers and Innovate Springfield for helping me develop and record this four-part series on creating the virtual pop-up. Hi, I'm Pam Shellhorn. I'm a regional specialist with the University of Illinois Extension in Community and Economic Development. I've been teaching entrepreneurs and small business owners how to create successful pop-up shops and storefronts for many years. I've also helped establish several city and farmers markets and manage downtown redevelopment efforts across the state of Illinois. Of course, that was before the pandemic hit. As you know, many vendor markets are going online via their websites, Facebook Live and other social media platforms. Retail storefronts have been forced to shut down and are now having difficult times getting customers to feel safe enough to shop in their stores. Whether you are a market vendor or have a brick and mortar storefront, it's imperative that you find a way to sell online. Selling online can be challenging. One of the greatest challenges for retailers is to imitate that in-store shopping experience online. That's the reason for our workshop today. Developing a unique online presence for your virtual pop-up is your greatest challenge. And honestly, many companies, both large and small, are not doing a very good job of it. This will take creativity on your part and a basic understanding of e-commerce best practices. Let's first talk about winning the digital shelf. Winning the digital shelf requires replicating that in-store experience, attracting attention, answering consumer questions, and meeting shoppers' needs. Whether selling online or not, this requires branded displays, excellent customer service, and face-to-face -face interaction, even if it is virtual. Replicating the in-store experience. How will you replicate that in-store experience for your customers? Although there is a difference, according to the research, on the expectations of shoppers, depending on whether they are buying staples or designer retail, shopping and buying online should be as easy as possible. Allow customers to browse. They want to see new products constantly. That means you're going to have to devote some time to your online site or have someone around that can help you with that site. You don't want to force your customers to register in order to purchase a product, but you do want to get those customers' email addresses. You need to build that contact list. Make sure your prices are competitive. Take time to review competing products on a regular basis. I know for some of us that's hard. I think part of that is our egos, but it is important to know what your competitors are doing. The big corporations do it and even small storefronts and vendors need to do it as well. Make sure your prices are competitive. And finally, make sure that buying your product is a pleasure. Make sure that website works easily, it's well done, and it's maintained on a regular basis. So how will you attract attention? First, you, need, you're, you will need to create virtual packaging to capture attention, gain trust, motivate purchases, generally with videos and high quality photos. Imagine yourself walking down the aisle of the store. Remember how we use packaging in order to attract that attention? Well, now you've got to do it online. You're going to need at least three to four high quality images per product. That's what the experts say. The greatest cause for returns is not getting the product you thought you were ordering. Using photos and videos of customers using your product are very powerful tools when selling online. Research indicates this can double your online sales. Now, if you're a small business person and you don't have the equipment you need or the experience in doing these high quality images, make sure you find someone a friend, or perhaps you can hire someone else to come in and do this for you. But those images and that site has to be updated on a regular basis. This is a major commitment. 
Videos work well, but they need to be short. Nothing more than maybe 15 to 30 seconds. And make sure you use the capturing because many people are gonna be looking at your site without the audio on. So if you're gonna use audio in a video, make sure you use those captions. Finally, get creative. Use live models, create specials, uh, use demonstrations online, especially if you're doing videos. Work with influencers in your area. Ensure you are providing more than just a simple catalog of products offerings. This is probably one of the most important things and that's answering consumer questions. When answering your consumer questions, remember that face-to-face -face interaction is the best way to give customers that in-store feeling, but it is also difficult to accomplish online. Make sure that you have a chat function available live if possible. If it's not live, make sure you have someone available to respond to messages left on your website or social media page as quickly as possible. I've been watching a lot of Facebook Live events that shop owners are doing and other vendors and artisans. And unfortunately, I'm not seeing this live chat function. When you're doing a Facebook Live event, you need to make sure you have someone else there other than the one uh, doing the uh, videoing. You need someone there that's gonna be able to look at the questions in the chat box and respond immediately. Questions on products, price, where you're located, shipping. You want to make sure that you're giving that same kind of attention to your customer, that same level of customer service you do when they walk into your store. Use accurate product descriptions because this is a major cause for returns. Make sure things on your website are correct. The next step is meeting your shopper's needs. Even if you are linking your virtual pop-up to an online market page or via a Facebook Live event, you will still need an expertly designed e-commerce site that is appealing and easy to use. Now, there are many out there that are already set up that you can just go out and rent or buy. You need to make sure you are meeting your shopper's needs. Developing online shop can require as much planning and time as building out a storefront or creating a vendor booth. Make sure your website's vis visual appearance, excuse me, make sure your website's visual appearance and functioning work on both laptop and mobile devices. Many of the sites work on laptops but many people today are using their mobile devices like iPads or their um, cell phones in order to purchase product. You wanna make sure that they can use that site as easily on a mobile device as they do on the laptop. If shipping costs are high, your customers will abandon the cart. Require a minimum to get free shipping or include shipping in the price. According to the research, 63% of cart abandonments are due to extra costs for shipping. So this might be something that you're gonna need to uh, research before you actually get that site set up. And then, as we mentioned, answer those consumer questions as quickly as possible. Remember, you're trying to imitate that in-store shopping experience. Once you're done, you wanna make sure you test it, you learn from it, and you refine it. Ask your customers, do short surveys, make sure that they are happy using your online site. You don't wanna get someone in there to buy your product and not be able to complete the transaction. Again, my name's Pam Shellhorn. If you need to contact me, here's my email address, pscha2 at illinois.edu. I welcome your questions. Uh, in part two of this series, we will be talking about understanding and interacting with the online shopper. Thanks for listening, everyone, and I wish you the best of luck with your online shopping site.